Hello and welcome back to another video about my orchids. Uh, today I'm going to make a uh, quite a special uh, video, I think. Something I would uh, uh, have done for quite a while, even before I really started filming my orchids. I thought if I do it, if I start filming my orchids, there's one uh, video um, I, I really have to make. And there's a plane going over, I think. So, I have to redo this intro because the plane was just fly flying over, of course. But, um, um, yeah, um, this is going to be a series that I uh, really wanted to make for quite a long time. Even before I uh, started filming uh, videos about my orchids, I thought, well, if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to share my uh, information out there with you guys, how I grow my orchids, there's one video I just have to do. I think it's very important and very... Um, nice to watch uh, and it, it's, it is basically going uh, over how I transfer my orchids into semi-hydroponic but actually self-watering. I keep uh, using both uh, terms. They are not completely the same and to be honest I have uh, a self-watering set setup but I started with uh, semi-hydroponics. Um, but it's not really the uh, subject for, uh, for today. It really is about how to transfer the plants into a completely different setup. Because most of the times, if you have, uh, if you buy orchids online or in a store or wherever, they, um, as far as I know, m most of the times they do come with bark or moss or coconut husk. And uh, I never heard somebody uh, found a uh, orchid online or in a store that already grew in semi hydroponic. Uh, maybe it's possible, but it's very rare, I think. So therefore, I thought um, it's it's going to be nice to show you what I do. To to uh, what kind of transition period I have and what I do to get the uh, orchids climate, climate here in my greenhouse and especially starting to grow into uh, the self-watering setup. I thought it would be nice to follow a uh, different genre of plants. So uh, they are all orchids of course, but I have uh, for example a Mesdevalia here, a Brassophola and some other ones, I will go over them uh, by uh, per plant, but I have several of them. And to be honest, at this stage I don't have a family opsis yet, but I will make a, uh, a video about that as well. So, um, the first thing that I will do is uh, show you the media that I use, so you have a better idea what, uh, what I use and why I like to use it. Um, maybe you follow some other uh, orchid growers online who are already uh, grow their plants in semi-hydroponic. Most of the times you may see uh, people using LECA. Uh, I also use LECA, but I'm kind of leaning more towards uh, the pumice. And I found a big, a big pieces of pumice and I really have good uh, results with them. So I start to reduce the LECA and get the pumice in more. So therefore you will see more pumice in here. But let's uh, have to take a look at the, uh, the media itself and then uh, we will back here. So let's have a look at the uh, different media that I like to use. I will go over them one by one. First of all, we have the pebbles, just the simple pebbles, seed pebbles, and I use them as a uh, top layer, top dressing. <laughs> and I get this uh, idea from the orchid room from Annabelle to prevent um, for creating a, a dry top layer in self-watering. These stones are going uh, on top of the pots and um, yeah, try to uh, remain the humidity in the, in a pot. So therefore, I like these uh, to use these stones, and I really like the look of them. I, I really like stones and uh, petals in in general. So therefore, uh, I really like uh, like I said the, the look of of it. Next to it, we have the good old leca, the leca beans, and um, yeah, I use it, but I uh, I'm. Replacing my lacquer slowly with uh, pumice, the big stuff. I personally like pumice a bit more, so I have that next to this. This is these are pumice stones. They are lighter weighted than than the lacquer, and they do the same job. They are only not uh, as round as lacquer. These not round at all. You can see the difference here. I think probably I should take a white one different shape and I personally like this uh, way better than Lekka. I also like the way it quotation mark is made. 
because uh, this is uh, made by humans. This is a whole process to get the clay be uh, pebbles as they are. And this is a uh, leca, uh, I'm sorry, pumice. And pum uh, pumice is uh, made, if I'm correctly, it's, it's basically um, lava rock. But this dried up in the air. So you have the lava rock, which I also use, but the pumice is dried, uh, air, air dried, so when the volcano um, did a burst, this is what dried in the air, the leftovers from that, from the lava. And the lava rock, the red one, is uh, dried on the ground. Uh, once again, if I'm correct, but I uh, did read this arc article uh, about uh, the differences between the, the lava stones and the pumice. But I really like it. Uh, it holds quite a, quite a lot of water, not too much. I think a little bit more than uh, the Leca. I'm not completely sure, but yeah, personally I just like the feel of it, I like the look of it. Like I said, I like my pebbles, and these come uh, could be closer to the pebbles, I think. Then we have the Ceramus. And yeah, I think this is my least favorite. It's always dusty. I clean it and I clean it and I clean it, <laughs> but I always have that orange dust in my reservoirs. So I at least prefer it. But this this holds quite a lot of water, and for the ones with the tiny roots, yeah. But I I, I stop buying it. This is my leftover. I will use it, but I have it replaced for. Um, this is um, most of it. It's lava rock. I hope you can see it and very small leca. I do not buy this leca anymore, but I just have it uh, laying around, so therefore I like to use it. But if I to have to replace this, I'm going to re replace it with a pumice, but then the small version. You have it in the same um, consi yeah, consistency, in the same um, measurements as this, the pumice. So I have the big one and I have the small one normally, but I had this laying around, so therefore I like to use it, of course, and save some money on it. <laughs> but yeah, therefore, it's basically the same, it works the same as the pom little pumice. And the last one is a very nice product, if you ask me, it's Cintiq. I think this is the brand name, Dusk. You can find it uh, online, it has also shows a website here. But um, yeah, this is basically a replacement of the uh, sphagnum moss. It's the inorganic sphagnum moss. Oh, I hope that didn't make too much noise, I'm sorry. But it's really soft. It's really nice stuff. But just like um, the sphagnum moss, this holds quite a lot of water. And really a lot of water. <laughs> so therefore, uh, you need to get used to it, to um, to use this in the pots. But if you can work with sphagnum moss, but you want to grow inorganic, or you need something that could use some uh, sphagnum moss, but you are transferring it into leca or pump stone, for example, and you could use a top layer of a moss, you may want to use Cintiq. It works basically the same as a moss. So this is my um, my media, and I mix according to the orchid. So if I have an orchid with thick roots, I use the leca and the pump stone. Like I said, the leca, it's just because I have a lot of leca, so I'm using it still, but if I didn't have leca anymore, I only would use the pom pumice. I, uh, like I said, I personally like it. For the smaller rooted ones, you can use the um, ceramus, there it is. You can use the ceramus or the little uh, lava rock or pumice just depends but I like to and I like to mix it up with my Cintiq when I started using Cintiq I used too much of it like I said it holds quite a lot of water but in combination with these two products for me it works really well something I almost did forget to mention and might be quite important the pump stone if you are interested in it um, most of the time you find it at the bonsai online stores but I found this at the local green um, garden center, I'm sorry, local garden center, and I found it in a section for uh, ponds, for um, for uh, plants of water plants and that kind of stuff. They use it as a media for them, but it's just pumice, 
and it's way cheaper. <laughs> so therefore, I thought I have to mention it. If you are interested in it, go to your local uh, garden center and or maybe online and look at the um, yeah the the water plants, and you will find uh, for you your ponds, if I'm saying that correct, for your garden ponds, and um, this will uh, be there, probably be there for, uh, as a medium, media to grow your uh, plants in, and um, yeah, so therefore I thought I uh, should mention this, because then it's just the same stuff, but it's way cheaper, it's ridiculous, but it is, it is what it is, and therefore I thought I would mention it. And this is the brand that I uh, like to use, the premium substrate, as you can see, and uh, the biological pond bottom, N natural substrate, pumice, just pumice, pump stones. So, yeah, like I said, it's basically ridiculous, I don't know why, but it's way cheaper. I uh, bought three of these bags uh, for uh, 25 euros, I think. So that's very uh, cheap in comparison if you are going online or for a bonsai store. Um, but yeah, I thought uh, just a tip there for you guys who are interested in it. But uh, yeah, like I said, this is the brand that I uh, like to use. So now we talked about uh, the growing media. Uh, it's time to uh, look at the uh, at orchids that I have uh, selected. And um, I, will have to do, I will do one... Uh, take one plant out of the pot and um, see what is in the pot. I will not do it with every orchid because there are too many and it will take too long, but it's the same proce process over and over again, so therefore I think uh, one, maybe two, uh, will be enough. But uh, let's start and let's see what we get and uh, from uh, uh, go on from there. So uh, I'm going to take you now down to, uh, to um, next to my potting table where I uh, will have the orchids out of the pots and we will have a look inside of the pots. So this is basically the setup uh, for myself. I have a trash, can, uh, a trash can here and a little uh, stairs, but I now use it as a chair so I can sit um, down for a bit because uh, otherwise it's, um, it's it's hurting my back too too much if I stand too too long with the uh, with the potting uh, table. So therefore I like to switch a little bit, and it's not the most beautiful side, but this is just what I do. So and I just want to be honest and uh, clear about that. This is just uh, how I work. So therefore. Um, I'm going to sit down now and um, we will uh, start to uh, unpot the first uh, one. I need to get my scissors. I did uh, steril sterilize it uh, already, but I need to get it and then uh, we get going. So, I'm most... Hello, <laughs> I'm back again. This is my scissors. I have a, a really long one. It's very uh, handy. Um, Okay, this is the first uh, orchid that we're gonna unpot, and as you can see, it's growing in bark. It's uh, Brachia Eternal Wind, and it's actually a freebie. I did get uh, this as a freebie as my last uh, order. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna unpot it, and we're gonna have a look at uh, what we will find in the pot. And the media is falling off quite easily, and. We have a lot of bark, as you can see here. I'm just going to let it fall down. I'm not going to use the bark. Let me give you a close-up. This is what we have. We have quite a, some good roots, beautiful roots. We have actually growing root tips. I hope you can see them. And uh, we have the moss plug inside. And actually, as you can see, the these are two plants, so I'm gonna split them. I'm gonna probably give one away, and the other one I will keep. But I uh, like to have one plant in in a pot and try to grow as as big as I can. But this is what we have, and you can see there's a little bit of. It looks like some mold going on there, but anyhow, I'm gonna. I want to repot it anyway. So, uh, well, a beautiful uh, view of my trash can, but yeah, this is uh, where it, the. The cutting in the roots will uh, going to be happen. So let's start. I have both orchids again, and I try to separate them. As you can see, clearly we have two moss blocks, so it's very clearly that these uh, are two orchids. And I'm going to try to uh, untangle them. 
and I'm going to break some roots. I know that it's I cannot avoid it. It just happens. But I try to avoid it as much. Obviously, I'm going to put one aside and work with this one. So we have some bark. I try to get off the bark as much as I can. But if if something is leaving a little bit of bark is left on the roots, it's not uh, the end of the world. But And damaging the root there quite, 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 quite a bit. I broke that root, not handy, I know, but it happens. Uh, I'm really not a fan of the moss. It's kind of dry, but it, it dries, when it's wet, it dries. Uh, very slowly, so therefore I don't like the moss. I like to have as much control over my plants as I can, and I feel that I have way more control growing in self-watering than uh, the general way to grow orchids. So therefore I uh, like to switch them. There are more um, reasons why I like to switch them, but I will go over them. Uh, I have a bit of a call, so I'm <laughs> sorry guys. Trying not to sniff too much. Well, here we go. It's, it's kind of okay. It doesn't have much roots, but yeah, it's too much bark for my liking. So I'm going to try to take the bark off a bit more. Probably gonna break the roots. But I try to do this as careful as I can. Okay, so this is what we have so far. A uh, little too b much bark for my liking, but the, I want to keep those roots. So I'm going to try to rinse it under the tap and see if I can get that last moss out and also the bark. But this is basically what I do. I watch the roots and I try to squeeze them. So if they are quite st uh, sturdy, I leave them. But if they are... Uh, weak if you can like this part it's nothing I and you see here it's broken so I can squeeze this and if I can I can pull it and it will uh, you see will see the actual root coming out but if element is uh, leaving the root quite easily so therefore I just uh, gonna cut it um, if I can yeah here it is you see the break there at the point of my scissors I'm just gonna cut just <coughs> underneath that break and there you go so I'm now going to rinse this arcade under the under the tap and uh, we will back in a few seconds so I was uh, able to get uh, quite some bark off and it's better the tap helps sometimes the water uh, makes it a little bit easier to and get the bark off but these pieces are very attached and this one it's just attached at a new growing point so I'm going to leave it I only have three parts of bark and a little little stuff here that I can uh, take off but most of it uh, is gone and also the uh, sphagnum most of it is gone there's a new root there so I'm going to leave that alone I need that root I want to work with those new roots and make the transition easier because the new roots will adapt uh, to the new situation. The old roots will not, but they probably they may shoot out. So therefore I like to keep them on, on the plant as much as I can. But I have uh, quite some... Uh, this, so this transition shouldn't be that difficult for this plant. Um, uh, one thing uh, you may have noticed already is that, let me... This is a, a climber. So the plant likes to grow upwards so that it will be uh, a little bit tricky to repot of to pot it up because it's climbing it's climbing basically out of the pot 
but I think I have a solution to that for for now. And uh, but yeah, this is how it looks, and this I'm doing with every argot I uh, transition in my growing system. Okay, so we have the uh, both of the argots here, and the one on the right we did on camera, the one on the left I did uh, off camera. Same process. I keep repeating that, but it's basically the same process. It's also a climber, as you can see. But it's a little bit difficult to put up, but we'll find a, we'll find a way. Also, one with uh, quite a lot of new root tips, growing root tips, and uh, a few pieces of bark. They are so attached. I'm just gonna leave them. I don't think it will uh, do any harm. And this is what I'm uh, always doing. So therefore, I, I'm not gonna skip it. I'm just gonna see you ex exactly what I'm doing uh, for years now, and it works uh, fine in my uh, my my climate and my care. Uh, a few pieces of bark is uh, isn't the end of the world. So I'm going to leave those, and uh, but we have to um, make sure that we don't have uh, any uh, pests in the inside of the pot or eggs of pests. For example, uh, the bush uh, snail is one uh, that is very common, and um, uh, to avoid that, I have I use this. It's uh, hydrogen peroxide, three percent. It's just uh, it's, uh, it's it says it in Dutch here, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide, three percent. I have it in a easygoing and working with a spray bottle here. So I'm gonna spray them very quite thoroughly, and um, just to try to get in every corner where possibly could be some eggs of some slugs or snails or any kind of pest. I just don't want them in my collection. And this works really well for me. I should probably walk on, uh, uh, walk, and knock on wood by now. But yeah, normally this works uh, very fine. Maybe you can hear it sis. Yeah, I think it's too hard. I have too many noises going on here. I'm sorry, but um, when it's fizz, uh, fizzes, fizzes, <laughs> when you hear the noise, it is doing the job. So, and it also helps to, uh, they say, I'm not completely sure about, but it also helps with uh, breaking root tips to, to clean them and uh, to keep them clean. As I have heard, I'm not sure about it, I, I, I don't know. But I also do this one, I'm also going in between the pseudobulbs, pseudobulbs, and onto the new roots, onto the growing tips, it doesn't matter, they all have to get a rinse and I'm doing this quite thoroughly because I want to make sure that I don't leave any eggs in there and normally I have only one plant in this tray per um, session of a hydroton peroxide session but because these two were already in the same pot it doesn't matter if they have a illness they probably have both by now anyhow so therefore I'm leaving that but whenever I change it I use some alcohol to um, Disinfect this uh, little tray so I can use it with other plants. I don't want to transfer disease, decisions, um, diseases, I'm sorry, and viruses from, from one plant to another plant. So, therefore, uh, but yeah, this, these could, two can stay. They were in the same pot, and like I said, it's the Brasia eternal wind. So, I'm going to leave them for a few minutes. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to get my potting media on, on, set of the, on top of my potting table, and these can. Uh, and let the uh, hydrogen do its its work. So I will be back with the uh, setup for uh, up-potting them. This is what I do. I have this tool. I have no idea how you call it in English. I'm sorry, I have to look it up. But if you know it, please let me know in the comments. But this one uh, makes holes and it's very easy. And I need one hole on the side, on, right on top of the arcade pot. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to Squeeze as hard as I can. I'm going to move this a little bit around and it should be enough. And yes, there it is. Let me show you this. See it? Whoops. There it is. And I need an, also the same sort of hole in this spot. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. Because you're all wondering why do we need the hole there? Just one hole. Yes, trust me, it helps me. Uh, uh, um, off quite a lot. 
Um, I need a little uh, thing for that. I uh, will be back just a second because what I do with that hole is put a little cable tie in it, just a small one, like this. And when you hear that clicking sound, you can stop. And I need my clipper thing I, here. I'm gonna take that end off because I don't use that. Let's put it aside. But this is for me easy to get a plant out of the pot. Let me give you a quick example. So I have we have this outer pot, we have the inner pot with a plant in. I'm going to put it in there so it's a little bit below the edge of the outer pot. So therefore this is very handy. I can take this and easily get the plant out, especially with plants who are just growing um, new roots. I don't want to make too much uh, movement because the, those new roots break off quite easily. So therefore I have this little thing there and I can really easily get it out of it. But that's all. So for me this is a very, very important tool. Um, I think you call them water meters or indi in indicators, I'm not completely sure. They are easily uh, findable on uh, Amazon for example and if I uh, don't forget I will put a link in it. But I use these guys, kind of guys for um, giving the, an, uh, me an uh, easy idea about how much water is down in the pot. So I don't have to lift every single argot, I just have a look at this and it will give me an indication of the uh, level uh, of water in, inside the uh, reservoir. So therefore I cannot live without these things. And I uh, pr basically buy them in, in bulk, I just uh, ordered 50 of them and they are so, so handy. So um, I'm going to put it, uh, my argot up and um, before I do any uh, put any media in my pot I will put this thing in there. But some parts it fits in the bottom, it will stay there, but most of the times I just need to hold it like this. And yeah, it's a whole thing, <laughs> it did it, uh, because I need to hold the plant, I need to get uh, the media in as well. But you will get the hang of it, but in uh, the first few times, yeah, I uh, needed my uh, third and uh, probably my fourth hand. But now I think I found a way to make it a little bit easier for myself. So I'm going to uh, touch the off potting table. And... I'm going to take my uh, argot in, and as you can see, it's the, um, some roots are touching the bottom of the pot, but because this argot is not used to semi-hydroponic self-watering, I will have a water level about this in my pot, so I will up -pot the roots above that, because otherwise I will create rot within a few days. It will go very quickly. So I'm going to put in some media first, before I even think about putting the argot in. Make some noise, I'm sorry for that. But just about this level. And I hope you can see it, I don't put it aside. So, stay there. And this is the point where I need a few more hands sometimes. But I will, um, I have this water indicator in my left hand, I also grab one back ball like this so I can hold them both and I can hold the plant and this gives this gives me a little bit of um, time to really watch how high or how low I want to plant in a pot this one because it's a climber I'm going to put it a little bit down even though we have a uh, first suitable down there I will get the media in an angle around it so I'm not going to make it completely flat, I will get it uh, slight, uh, slightly angled. I will show you that when I'm done, so you have a better idea probably what I'm talking about. But I will have the argot around the same um, level as the edge of the pot. So the roots can go e quite uh, easily get in the pot. At least that's the plan, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to hold my argot as steady as I can. I'm going to grab my media and I'm going to put it in very carefully because all of those, those new growing roots and slowly letting it fall down on those roots try not to break those roots because I can uh, really could use those roots there
and I'm going to fill up the pot. And then I'm going to hold my um, arcot in my left hand and also that indicator. I'm just going to keep them, but I'm going to move the pot a little bit, shake it a little bit, so the media falls down more evenly. And I try to fill up every hole I created there by uh, just very carefully um, um, move the pot a little bit around. So now we are at an angle. I hope this is in focus. I cannot see it. I'm sorry. Um, the back bulb is now touching the media. So what I'm going to do now is put only a media um, in on the front of the pot. Not more, in, no more in the back, but only in front of the pot because this is a climber like we talked about. So I like to have some media here so these roots can go in the media there. But I don't want to rot this bulb, so therefore I'm going to put it in, in an angle. And maybe this is um, a better way to show it. This angle, what I have now, my plant in. Alone. Try not to shake it too much. I need some media here. We have some holes there. So I'm going to put in some media in there. A little bit more media around the, the roots there and I think we are done. <coughs> Let me show you up close. So we have a lot of media in front of it. Do you see that new root? Oh I'm sorry. There that's now laying um, towards the new media. I hope it will take off. That would be great obviously. And you see we have a sort of hole down there. I'm gonna fill this up with uh, with a grid. I always do a top layer of uh, uh, grid and I saw that on Annabelle's The Orchid Room um, channel and I uh, used it for a few years now well probably for a year now I think and I really like it so I'm going to grab some stones and uh, finish this uh, up potting by that I have them sitting on the ground because they, uh, they are getting quite heavy <coughs> this media is quite uh, light weighted but the stones are a little bit heavier so I'm leaving them on the floor I'm putting in some, some stones there in the back. And why do I fill it up with stones? Because these stones, this grid, where is my camera? Here is my camera. This, this doesn't hold any water. There can be some water uh, on top of it, but that will dry out in, well, probably in a few minutes, maybe a little bit longer. But this pumice holds water. That's the whole idea, to get water um, that is sitting in the reservoir, so on, uh, on the bottom of the pot, and lift it up through these, um, these pumice. They uh, will take the water up and the nutrients up. These stones do, don't do that, so therefore my bulb is quite safe, because this will not take and hold water around that bulb that all the bulb that is down there in the pot. So therefore I like to uh, put some stones around it. Because we don't want to have any rot in our pots. Of course. Sometimes when I'm near a, a new root, like I sh showed you before, I just pick up some stones and I'm not going to lay them on top of them, but just around them. I like to have uh, room to let the orchids um, and the roots um, breathe as well. It's very important as well. But yeah, that is how I do it. And let's have a look because let's keep an eye on this root here. Do you see that? It's a beautiful new root. It has a beautiful new growing tip. This is one to watch. I need to uh, remind myself of that. but. We will see if this root will continue to grow or not. If it does, 
It's a nice indication that it uh, is uh, transmitting to a new setup and I can fill the reservoir. Let's um, put a mark here. Why not? Why not? <laughs> um, so we can uh, we have an indication of uh, where the route was when we started this process. So I'm going to mark it here. Well, it's quite a thick mark. Can you see that? I hope you... Well, yeah, I think you can. The light is quite strong here, so I cannot really see what I'm doing here on camera, but I have marked it. Um, yeah, you can see the red line there. So let's keep an eye on that one. I'll let uh, this dry. The mark, I'll let the mark dry for a few seconds and it will be fine. But this is the process I'm going through when I have new orchids um, uh, reporting wise. I will now talk about uh, more what I do next. So this is uh, just to uh, give you an indication. I will do it with every argot. It's just depending, like I talked about when I uh, showed you the media, uh, does it have thick roots or thin roots? Uh, if it has thin, I'm using the small stuff. If it has thicker roots, I use the bigger pieces of pumice. And a leca as well. I don't have leca out here now, but uh, I, uh, but like I said, I uh, really prefer pumice more, so therefore you see me work with pumice more than with, uh, with leca. But um, yeah, let's uh, continue this journey. And before we, I, I forget, I put on the date when I, uh, at this stage, I will, uh, this is the original name tag, so I know which orchid we have uh, uh, marked because of that route. And I have a date on. We do the uh, date writing a little bit different, I think, than in America, but this is the 1st, April, and it's uh, 21. So, that is, uh, this tag will go in uh, with the plant, and now I know what time it did go or started its uh, semi hydroponic journey. So, these are the plans I have selected so far for our project how to transfer your argots in a semi hydroponic or self watering setup, at least how I do it. And let me see, uh, we have a Bellara, that is this one, and it has a few roots, could use some more roots, but this is the Bellara. Then we have a Brasia, it already has had it started new roots, so we will watch them and see if they uh, will um, develop further. And this is the one with, uh, with a mark, and here you can see it, a red mark just above my finger and just underneath that new root tip. I'm very curious to see what that root will do. I hope if I didn't da damage it, it should be uh, growing on and then this one, this transition is very easy. Um, this is the Mazzavellia, Ignea. Um, two plants, I just put them all together. But um, not much roots, I have to admit, to start with. And it's probably, I, I have another Mr. Velia who is doing very well, but I do not have, this is my second one, so therefore I thought I'm going to take this opportunity to film a Mr. Velia going into semi hydroponic. Um, so that one we're gonna watch closely, coming uh, months, probably the whole year, why not? <laughs> and I have this Odontocidium. And Ila, oh my god, and the pronunciation, my pronunciations of the names is very bad, I'm sorry. But um, let me, I'm sorry, let me try to focus in because I see a little teeny tiny new root starting there. Oops, my camera is not used to this. <laughs> oh, come on, camera, come on, you can do this. Um, it's just above my finger there, that little point is a green point so that should be a new root who knows and then we have another brasia verona and this one has some roots in the pot but i don't think they will make it or probably not all of them but i hope they will shoot out new roots so that's something to uh, keep in mind when we do the updates and also we have some new shoots here, some shoots that um, did start at new roots already, but yeah, they are damaged. I don't know if it's uh, because of snails, they 
it doesn't look like snail damage, but who knows? Probably should be uh, able to shoot out new roots pretty soon that can then take over the pot and um, get used to a self watering system. It's a nice uh, big plant that were two in one pot, but I uh, just uh, get, did get one part, the other part is another pot. And also, this one has a flower spike, something to yeah, kind of look forward to, but not and not meaning the blooms in this uh, this case, but more how the orchid will react to semi hydroponic and will I leave that spike on or not. If it uh, starts to desiccate more, I will take it off because it uh, loses energy by making those blooms. If it doesn't, if it, and if it starts making new roots quite quickly, I'm going to leave it on the flower spike, but I'm not sure yet. We will see the orchid. Uh, I hope the orchid will tell me what to do. So this is a uh, four, f four of them. Uh, no, five. I'm sorry, five of them. And um, yeah, it's a nice start, I think. And you can see the different media that I uh, have been using in the pots, and I'm really looking forward. What I do now is the same with my uh, fusarium treating orchids, and it may sound a bit silly, but I mean, I'm just giving them pure raw water with some seaweed in it, just to get, give them some hormones. I don't fill up the reservoirs, I will wait until the roots really start growing in the pots. As soon as they shoot out new roots, as soon as I, I can see them, like for example this one, if it gets bigger, this one will uh, have a reservoir with water, because then those roots can adjust to the wet environment, the new wet environment. They are now used to a wet and dry cycle, I will give them only a wet cycle, so therefore I need those new roots, they can adjust easily easily uh, to, um, to that new setup. So, it is a, a kind of fun project, if you ask me. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I hope you too.